Hello everybody, Evan and Storm here. Welcome back to Final Fantasy XIV Online Shadowbringers. In the last episode, we got back into the Eden quest line. So we uh, joined back up with uh, Reen and Gaia and headed back out in the empty to Eden where we've been working only to find that the, uh, the area doesn't look so good. Um, we were seeing some nice kind of grasses and flowers and everything when we last time we were here, but now it's looking kind of dead. And uh, this seems to be the reason, at least what we've been able to determine so far, is that the light is still too strong out here. And so what we're going to try and do is rebalance uh, darkness aspect of ether. Well, and um, to do that, we are going to fight another avatar of darkness, um, or av elemental avatar, this one of darkness. And we're going to be using the cloud of darkness from the void as a template. We fought that way back in the Crystal Tower series. So, that is where we're going to go and see if this works. All right, so we're pretty much ready to go ahead and um, hop in and uh, see how it goes. So let's go ahead and uh, hit the duty finder. We want to go to raids for shadow bringers. Eden's promise Umbra is what we want. I want to go ahead and join in as machinist. And so, we'll see how that goes. I think I've got a bit of a weight on my hands. So, as usual, I'll go ahead and cut here, and then I'll be back once uh, it's ready to go. Okay, that did not take long at all. So, let's go ahead and commence. I mean, I guess this is current content, so there are lots of people that are doing it. And uh, I did refresh my memory on this fight. It's been a little while since I've done it. Um, so, well, on one of my other characters. I love the Final Fantasy VIII music. I'm drawing out the darkness. Get ready. Abyssal Abhorrence, the Cloud of Darkness. It's a little it different. It worked, Gaia! Don't We've done it! Alright. Attention. Oh, I'm off. Uh, healer should get me up. You gotta watch the boss. I was getting so settled into my uh, my routine that. Uh, Those blocks are going to be destroyed, if I remember correctly. Now here you just need to not stand on one block for too long. So 
Because otherwise it will disappear underneath of you and you'll oh you're dead. Oh, there's that again. Again, too focused on the floor. Gotta break the tethers there. That is, that is really hard to notice. We gotta watch which one of those guys is glowing. I'm gonna wait until this is done before I accept. She's gonna jump over there and then do a wide angle cone. One person in each of these. That again. He didn't fall off this time. find a spot where nobody else is going to be. Alright, so I gotta watch for the glowing. So avoid that one. Real nice thing about the machinist is just how mobile it is. Close, close. All right, break our tethers. All right, she's going to do the thing here. Tether herself to the two sides again. Alright, so we want to be over here ish. Unfortunately, I didn't get hit by that. Pure luck. We 
you really need to be kind of like in front in order to be able to see those things. But from behind, not easy to see. Oh, there we are. There we are. At some point, there's going to be clouds we're going to need to DPS. Oh, there they are. Almost there. There we go. Okay. A little bit of a rough start, but you know, got it settled in there. Give out the player accommodation, sure, and grab some loot, uh, which you know I'll just go ahead and roll on everything. And now I've already gotten one, so I can't get anything else, so I'll just go ahead. Pass on all that. Get those tokens. Alright, there we are. Let's go ahead and talk to Gaia and finish this off. Uh, that all went surprisingly well. Of course, we have Ayami to thank for slaying that ghastly creature. <laughs> Barely. You're fantastic, Gaia. Anyone would think you, you're an old hand at this. You weren't so bad yourself. We make quite a team, don't we? We certainly do. I don't know about you two, but I'm itching to see whether our hard work has paid off. Let's head back. All right, what do I want? Is there anything in there that's crit? No. Skill speed, sure. It doesn't look like much. Hmm. The plants are just as lifeless as they were before. Maybe the light's influence is still too strong? What in the world? Okay. In fleeting hues and endless warmth, a gentle light washed over me. A glimmer of hope once lost. All right, uh, next. Guys, more than a little vexed at your, at your last outing did not result in greater changes in the empty. We tipped the scales away from light, I'm sure of it, but something's wrong, very wrong.
A hundred long years I have waited for this moment. I knew it. You've been hiding inside Eden all this time. Oh, lovely. An Asian. An Asian. I am Mitron, servant of Zodiac. The voice that was whispered to me all my life. Indeed, and thanks to you, I am all but free from my prison of light. Does that mean Eden was used to seal away an Asian? Wait, that is Eden. An Asian transformed into a Sin Eater. Hmm, I've heard enough about Asians to know they're nothing but trouble. I've never imagined that one of them was behind all this. I thought that restoring the darkness was my idea, but it, this was your plan from the very beginning. It was, but all it took was the slightest suggestion. The rest was entirely your own doing. Uh, my freedom is so close, I can almost taste it. Finally, my soul may journey beyond the flesh to which I am yet bound. I knew you would come for me, Gaia. Don't flatter yourself. You've caused me nothing but pain. If I've helped you, it wasn't intentional. Even now, your memories elude you. Hearken unto me, Gaia, and remember... In an age past, the world you know as the 13th was flooded by darkness. Like ripples in water, the repercussions were felt in the other shards, none more so than here on the first. It became perilously imbalanced and susceptible to the influence of light. Were light to consume the first as darkness did the 13th, it would likewise become a lifeless void, lost to our cause. We could not allow this mistake to be repeated. It was our duty to safeguard this world from the self-same fate. Yes, we heard about that from Ulu Unukohai guy that we uh, did uh, work with with the uh, Warring Triad earlier. After a time, Emmett Cell conceived of a plan to trigger a rejoining, utilizing the very light we had labored to keep in check and tasked us to, with bringing the plan to fruition. But at the last, we were thwarted by Ardbert and his companions. Though our resolve was strong, there was, theirs was stronger still. And as we fell, so too was the light unleashed. For us, however, death is not the end. Though our bodies may perish, our souls live on, withdrawing but temporarily to the rift. Until you can find a new body to possess. Right. I too would have been reborn, but ere my soul could leave its corporeal form, Ardbert struck me with a blade of purest light, and that light enveloped my body, twisting it beyond recognition. So they were trying to basically unmake an Asian in the same way that we did. But it was a blast of light, rather than just general ether. Eden, the first Sin Eater. My soul felt such agony as I had never known, and then I knew no more. In my insensate, instinctive state, influenced by Arbert's fervent desire to banish darkness, I unleashed the light burgeoning within me, and it spread as an all-consuming wave to every corner of the world. So, yeah, that's how the Flood of Light started. The 
The flood of light. So that's how City Nurse came to be. All would have been lost had not the one called Minfilia appeared, halting the light's inexorable advance. He saved what little still remained of the world. In the process, he also restored to me a sliver of my consciousness. Though I remained trapped in my altered form, motionless, I was capable of only feeble whispering. Emmett Selk, couldn't he have saved you? Perhaps he could have, if such had been his wish. Far easier, however, to simply find another piece of my fractured soul to replace me, because uh, you're one of the sundered, right? From his perspective, there was no need to intervene and potentially disturb with the balance of ether, and so here I remained. So after you failed, he left you here to rot, some friend he turned out to be. Thus abandoned, I called out what seemed like an eternity to the only soul who could save me. You, Gaia. All this time you were calling to me for help? Yes. But you had forgotten me, forgotten our duty. Through vestiges of your true though vestiges of your true power remained, you could not wield it at will. Time went by, and eventually change came. The light began to subside, and the dark of night returned. Gradually, my voice grew stronger until I was able to exert my will over you. You wanted me to free your soul from Eden, which is why you had me attack it. Another plan that ended in failure, thanks to Ayame. Indeed. Thankfully, your subsequent attempts to restore this barren land allowed Eden to absorb more and more ether aligned closer to darkness, gradually eroding the cage of light that holds me. Owing to your most recent efforts, my mind is wholly my own once more. I am able to project my image beyond those confines. And all this time we've been helping to free an Asian? Hmm, that's a fine tale, but why should I care about any of it? What are you to me? Come with me to Eden's core. There all shall become clear. Wait. All right. So Eden is an Asian transformed into the first city eater. All right, well, let's talk to Reen here. I just realized something. If Eden had been absorbing all that rebalanced ether, that must be why we've struggled to restore life to the empty. I suppose we can think about that later, though. More importantly, it seems I've lost control over Eden, most likely because of the Asian. Orianche specifically warned us about not listening to the fairy's honeyed words. But we'd better think this through before we go rushing in. Oh, if only he and Thancred were here now. Well, that's not possible. Uh, what are you talking about? I'm sorry, guy. I shouldn't be so quick to lose heart. What? No, that's not what I meant. Who are Orianji and Thancred? Uh... Wait, I know those people, I'm sure of it, but why can't I remember them? Hmm, I thought something was strange when I mentioned the festival on board Eden... Uh, it was as though you had no recollection of our earlier conversation. This is most likely connected to Mitron. She's losing her memories. Damn it all. What more is that fiend going to take from me? Tell the truth. The thing that frightens me most is that you might forget about us. That won't happen. For every memory I lose, we'll make two more together. 
And if I need to know something, I can just ask you. Why not start by telling me about Orianji and Thancred? To be honest, my nerves are all at jitter, so I need something to help me settle down before we confront Mitron. Orianji is probably the most intelligent person I know. He spends a lot of time reading, but he also says that you can't learn everything from books and encouraged me to go out and see the world for myself. Sounds sensible to me. Much better to experience things firsthand than to read about someone else's, like those coffee biscuits. No book could ever describe how good they taste. Is there anything else you can tell me about him, Ayame? Hmm. He can walk on water until he can't. Um, he's devoted to the study of prophecies. Yes. Prophecies are funny things, if you ask me. If people know that something terrible is going to happen, they'll go and prevent it. Which would make the prophecy untrue. <laughs> I wonder what Orianje would say to that. As for Thancred, he's the one who freed me from Yulmar. At first, I thought of him as uh, my knight in shining armor, but really, he was much more than that. He traveled all over Norvrant, and he helped me become the person I am today. He even gave me my name. His gift for song on the heart of many a fair lady, or so he claims. Um, he's also an expert in infiltration. We'll go with that. That would explain how he was able to sneak into Yulmore and rescue the damsel in distress, just like in the songs. Hmm, I'm hardly a damsel in distress. Well, I suppose I was back then, but Thancred taught me how to fight and survive. Actually, while we're on the subject, that gunblade over there belonged to Thancred. As far as mementos go, it's a bit on the cumbersome side, but it reminds me of our adventures together. Even though there's little chance I'll ever see him again, it still feels like he's here with me. To take up the gunblade once you're a little older. Uh, keeping your memories close. You know what? I should keep a diary. If I ever forget anything, everything, at least I will have something to look back on. Not a bad idea. Uh, it's a brilliant idea. Since we're going to be making lots of new memories together, maybe I could write, them, write in it too. As long as you improve your handwriting before you go scrawling all over it, I'd like your entries to be vaguely legible, if you don't mind. Of course, your ladyship. But before that, we've got a nasty to deal with. Let's get this over with. All right, and I think that this is actually going to be a good spot to go ahead and stop for today. So for next episode, we'll enter Eden's core and see what's going on in there and then see what the next thing we're going to have to deal with is. All right, so for now, hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Go ahead, like, subscribe, and comment, and I will see you next time.